fantastic. Can't wait for that. Yeah, we're so looking forward to that. It's going to be a great show. Please don't miss it. Well, we all like to think of ourselves as rather street savvy, but would you actually know how to defend yourself if that need arose? The truth is, most of us don't, which of course is a dangerous mix considering the number of attacks that take place around the country each and every day. And it's not always a case of stranger danger. Just under 50% of women have reported violence during a former relationship and figures of schoolyard bullying are forever on the rise. But just uh, by knowing some basic self-defence techniques, it is possible to avoid an attack. And here to show us is self-defence world champion John Gill, along with two of his students. Now, I've got Elizabeth, but I'm going to call her Lizzie because she said call me Lizzie, and I bet she's a better fighter than I am. And Josh is here as well. Good morning to you all, guys. Morning, Larry. Uh, John, level with us here. Do, do you have to have a black belt to get yourself out of a dangerous situation? Not at all, Larry. It's um, really easy to learn basic self-defence. Even a five-week program will get you through basic self-defence. It's also good to then go into martial arts and continue if you can. So okay. how important is it that we have some basic skills? Well, I think just you know, the statistics you said before, it's really important to learn basic self-defence. It's so important that actually Australian Hapkido Federation now offering free seminars throughout Australia. And we're now looking for a sponsor or a government grant to look at a free five-week program for every woman and child in the country. So that's my next goal, to work on that. All right. What type of defence mechanism should we have for things like bullying or even domestic violence? It's better to do uh, passive self-defence right. for that. So you don't want to kick or punch someone right. in that situation. Kicking and punching is only for really violent situations like rape or street attack. But for, for basically for bullying situations, more passive uh, pressure points, blocking, okay. all of that without getting too aggressive. All right, now you've got some demonstrations here for us, haven't you? Uh, you're going to show us firstly an example of how you can block an attack. Sure. Okay, okay so blocking basically, that. we use our outer forearm, so you're using the outer yeah. part of the forearm to block. We'll show some techniques yep, now. Go, go for it. Now, John, that looks like a, an instinctive response, but how long do you reckon it takes to, uh, to get confident enough that when we see something coming, we throw that arm up second nature? Well, as I said, five weeks, we had really? a girl yeah. that we did a 10-week course at school, and five weeks through that course, she was actually attacked, physically attacked, okay. and got away from the situation quite easily. OK. OK, so. so I may or may not think to do that. <laughs> what about a verbal way? We've always been taught that you should, you know, shouldn't... Um, you know, you should try and talk your way out of it, I guess, rather than using... Definitely. Self-defense training does increase your confidence. If you're confident, you're less likely to be attacked in the first place. Right. But if you can, verbal de-escalation, talking your way out of it, trying to control the situation. Keep your ego out of it, like people at pubs trying to get in fights. Keep everything out of it. As far as your ego, just try and calm the situation down as quickly as possible. By and saying what sorts of stuff should we say? Just say well, it depends on the situation, right. but you just got to say, look, you know, I've done nothing to you, leave me alone, let's keep it cool here. Try and keep a smile on your face, like, you know, the pub situation, they bump yeah. into somebody or something. Yeah, yeah. So I've got no problem with you. Back up a little bit, keep your hands up in case they do have a go at you, but try and walk away from the situation or run away from the serious situation as quickly right. as possible. And that should always be our first response, right? Right, definitely. Yeah. We, don't, we teach people how not to fight, how to avoid it. Of yeah. course, yeah. this stuff is the, if, you, if it's really serious. Okay. okay. Liz, you've been learning for about six months now. Yeah. You feeling good? Yeah, feeling I'm good. Feeling more confident out there? Definitely. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And, and Josh, what about you? Oh, I'm very confident. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, all the techniques John's showed me are very good. And it's all becoming second nature to you? Oh, uh, the more practice, the better. Yeah, it's right. always second nature. He's our assistant instructor with us as well. <laughs> okay, yeah, well, so I won't argue with it's him It's like either. an insurance policy. Yes. It's kind of like, it gives you peace of mind. Yeah. So you don't want to use it, you want to avoid the situation. It gives you that peace of mind, you know what to do in case you get in trouble. First thing, talk. Second thing, walk. Third That's thing, it. run. That's it. Come and see you for a five-week course. Thank you very much, guys. Good to see you. <laughs> and hopefully you've never had to, to use those skills yet, have you? Um, no, but at least I feel confident and that I could get out of it or run away or something like that. Yeah. So. Okay. okay. Good Thanks, to see guys. you, guys. Thank you Thanks very much, very much for coming in. Thank you. All right. Still to come, the ballet dancers turn